don't know if you guys can hear me. The video is going up now. Uh, stream is going through. As soon as it pops up, I'll let you know. Hey, everybody. Hi, we're live. Good morning. Um, welcome to Tropicon Live. Uh, we're all very excited to have you all here with us and be able to bring a little bit of Tropicon home to all of you from the comfort of your couch and living room. Um, very grateful to have such an amazing community here at Tropicon. Uh, we can't do this in person this year, unfortunately, due to the ongoing health crisis. Um, but hopefully next year, uh, under much safer circumstances, we'll be back at the hotel all together again. Um, we can't wait to have you back, you know, uh, walk in the floors of our vendor room and our, our artist alley. Um, we, we're just excited to have everybody back because without you all there, it's, it's just not the same. And we we're looking forward to it. So um, we're, we're at least lucky enough to be able to bring the quality programming you've come to expect and love from Tropicon here live on YouTube and your various streaming platforms. Um, without further ado, let's get started uh, with our mermaid story time. So let's get started. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to Long Island Tropicon 2020. We're so excited to be swimming on back to the surface to see all of you again. <laughs> my name is Mermaid Kalis, and my name is Mist, like the sky after a storm. And we're mermaids. <laughs> now, have you ever met real mermaids before? You haven't? Well, then today is your lucky day and you're in for a fantastic time. We're so excited to get to share some of our very favorite stories from the sea with everyone today. Do you like to read? Raise your fins nice and high if you like to read with your pod. Oh, a pod is what mermaids call their family. Do you like to read together? Oh, that's splash-tastic. Mermaid Kalis and I come from different parts of the sea, so when we meet up on a sandbar every now and then, we like to trade the stories that we've heard from my kingdom and hers, and then we get to share them with all of you. So we have a couple really fantastic stories coming your way today. And again, many thanks to Long Island Tropicon for inviting us back up. Oh, Kalis, why don't we start with one of your very favorite guides about becoming a mermaid or a merman? That's right. So the first story we wanna share with you this morning is called Mermaid School. Now, have you ever been to mermaid school before? Well, you must go to human school, right? Well, humans have something called school. It's like a school of fish where you learn numbers and cartography, like, like creating maps oh. and they count all the fish in the sea. They do all sorts of wonderful things in the human world. Humans are very smart. I don't think a lot of merfolk give them credit. <laughs> Well, now you get to learn about what mermaids do in school. And so this book is Mermaid School by Joanne Stewart Wetzel. I'm so excited. <laughs> this is fantastic, Kayla's. So just like every morning, I brush my hair, I shine my tail, I cannot stop to play. It's time to leave for mermaid school. Today is my first day. And this is Mermaid Molly. She's going on a big adventure starting mermaid school. When I arrive, there's no one here that I have met before, but I can make new friends at school. I'm always glad for more. How many of you like to make new friends at school or wherever you play together? <laughs> a boy is hiding by the couch. I think he's feeling shy. Hello, I'm Molly, I said. What's your name? I'm Squirt was his reply. So here's Squirt. Are any of you very shy? Or are you very outgoing like Mermaid Molly? I'd say I'm pretty outgoing. I like to make friends wherever I go. <laughs> if you see one single fish, you can bet Kalis is going to chat with them. <laughs> so let's see if Molly and Squirt become good fin friends. Why are you hiding, I asked. There's no one here I know, Squirt said. Well, we can fi fix that in a flash. Let's go and say, hello. So Molly is going to befriend Squirt and she's going to show him to all of her new friends. Now, even though she is brand new to mermaid school, I think Molly's very good at making friends too. So let's see who else they meet at mermaid school. Our teacher, Miss Marina calls. Please line up in a queue and follow me inside our reef. I'll show you what to do. So there's their teacher, Miss Marina. 
Do you like to follow your teachers in a line? Did they tell you to swim straight in the line? <laughs> or do you swim all over the place? <laughs> I think in Miss Marina's class, she wouldn't have you swimming all over the place. Your cubbies have your names on them. Your tail packs go inside. If you forget to take them home, they'll float off with the tide. Have you ever had your school supplies float away on the waves before? It's really, really hard to catch them unless they get tangled in seaweed. Then you have something to grab onto. Make sure you put all of your supplies in your cubby with your name on them. That's right. So in Miss Marina's class, we have Sandy, Shelly, Pearl, Dory, Moana, Molly, Coral, Gil, Marlin, Ray, Shad, Finn, Cisco, and Squirt. Oh, and don't forget Dory. We found her. <laughs> Now are any of these your cubbies? Make sure you put your tail pack in there if you do. Has anyone seen Nemo? Oh, <laughs> he's in another class. Miss Marina hands out seashells. We count them one by one. We add and then we take away until we're back to none. So just like humans, mermaids do math too. For art class, we use shells again to make things that we can wear. Just like the crowns that we wear. We string them into necklaces and I braid some in my hair. You can make so many wonderful things with the things that are around your house, like shells, or you can even use sand. To memorize the alphabet, we sing our A, B, C's. Soon we know each other's letter sounds and learn to read with ease. So for A, we have the Arctic Sea, for B, the Baltic Sea, for C, the Sea of Crete. For D, the Davis Sea. For E, the East China Sea. F is the Flores Sea. And G is the Sea of Galilee. Now, are any of you from those seas? If you are, that's a really long way to swim. Our music teacher comes in next. Her name is Miss Lorelei. Her trumpet fish accompany our notes from low to high. And when they play a faster tune, her drum fish join the band. We swirl our tails and hand in hand, we dance across the sand. Do you like to have a big jamboree under the waves? Do you like to dance under the sea too? <laughs> it's always fun with Miss Lorelei. She has so many wonderful fishy friends in her band. And flipping your fins with your friends is the best. It's time for recess. Let's go play. We check out everything. Squirt builds a row of sand castles, and I ride the great kelp swing. We shoot up in a water spout, and then we play hide and seek. When I was it, I found them all. And no, I didn't geek. <laughs> Do you have lots of games that you play when you're at recess? Do you like to play red fish, green fish, one, two, three? Kayla's is so fast, and she always wins. <laughs> There's clam burgers for lunch today, along with seaweed pie and frozen salt pops for dessert. There's nothing I don't try. We hurry back for circle time as our food digests. We play a game, we sing a song, then comes the very best. What do you think the very best is going to be? Well, you know, miss, but we don't want to spoil it for anybody else. I don't know. I think clam burgers are pretty much just the bubbles themselves. <laughs> <laughs> our teacher reads a story she calls a fantasy of boys and girls who have no tails and can't breathe under sea. So here we are listening to story time about boys and girls who have no tails. They must be talking about humans just like you. <laughs> wow, they're having a story time about you while well, we're having a story time about us. <laughs> Miss Marina sticks the starfish by each name on her chart. That means everybody did a fantastic job in school that day. Do you ever get starfish next to your name at school? I'm sure of it. She says, let's sing the goodbye song before we all must part. I can't believe it's time to go. How can the day be done? The hours have just flown by because mermaid school is fun. Do you sing a song before you leave human school? If you don't, maybe you should bring a song in and that can be your goodbye song. The tide comes in, the tide goes out, and mermaid school now ends. Tomorrow we will all be back to play with our new friends. Goodbye. As everyone gets ready to go home. Now,
did you know that there's a mermaid school handbook? You didn't? Oh, this is your handy dandy guide for everything under the sea, especially when you're going to mermaid school for the first time. And I'm pretty sure a lot of these rules can go for being a human school of fish too. That's right. So here are some rules and tips you might wanna know when you go to human school. School is no place for your family pet. Please leave your dogfish, catfish, or seahorse at home. <laughs> you don't want a dogfish running around crazily in your classroom. Dogfish like to play fetch. Oh, do you know what a dogfish is? A dogfish is a kind of shark. You can find them swimming around the North Fork of Long Island sometimes, but don't worry, they don't bite. <laughs> new, new students, if you meet a new mermaid or merman swimming by, ask their name and tell them yours. It's a great way to make fin friends. So I always like to introduce myself by my name and then a fun fact. So when I say my name is Mist, like the sky after a storm, that's a good way for my new friends to remember my name. And I like to introduce myself as Kalis. And I come from the kingdom of Amaranthia where the sand is soft and my favorite color, pink. <laughs> now you can help protect our planet and keep it blue. Protect the living creatures that make our planet beautiful. Be careful of swimming near fragile corals, jellyfish, or sea anemones. Give passing schools of fish the right of way. That's right, humans are visitors to the ocean. So we need your help in making our oceans clean and safe, especially for the creatures that live there, including mermaids. And be careful swimming at the beaches. Do you know what today is? Today is one of the first days of August, which means it's jellyfish season. <laughs> Make sure you give those jellies a wide berth. Make sure that when you're playing together, you practice playground courtesy. Wait in line to take your turn to ride that big kelp swing. Always be courteous and always take turns. Make sure no one lives in a cave before you hide in it while playing hide and seek. <laughs> Many caves in our neighborhood are homes to octopi who may swear ink on uninvited guests. Octopi are very, very shy. So you have to be very quiet and make sure that they know that you're a friend or else you might get a face full of octopus ink. But if you always ask nicely and treat them very kindly, octopi are great friends. They always come to you when you're in need because they can lend you an arm or eight. <laughs> and the humpback whales that migrate past Kalis's mermaid school have asked that the students stop tickling their stomachs when they say, swim overhead. <laughs> Oh, and of course, there's after school activities at Mermaid School, too. On Tuesdays, you can join the choir. Singing with our school choir and our world famous music teacher, Miss Lorelei, whose enchanting voice became legendary when she sang to ships sailing on the Rhine River, and she'll conduct us. Oh, I want to be able to sing as well as Miss Lorelei. She has such a beautiful voice. It's legendary. <laughs> And one of the other club activities is water ballet. When you come to mermaid school, you can join the synchronized swim team and learn how to do all sorts of tricks like torpedoes and barrel rolls and the dolphin kick. I hope you can all join us at mermaid school one day and that you can bring the lessons we learn at mermaid school back to human school. <laughs> and hopefully you can give us some lessons on what you learn in human school. We love to learn about human stuff all the time. Kayla's is somewhat of an expert about human things, so she teaches me a lot. <laughs> oh, I know. Since we were talking so much about protecting our fin friends in the sea, why don't we read a book together about protecting a seal pup? Oh, I love that. Kayla's and I are going to read this one together. So make sure that all of our guppies at home, we're going to follow along with the story and then some science facts about the creatures that live in the sea and what you can do to help them. So this story is called Spot, a sea pup's survival guide by Lauren Knight. So this is the story of a little seal pup who gets into a bit of trouble, but luckily has a friend around to help him out. And how do all good stories start on land? Once upon a guppy? Is that right? That's close, I think. Once upon a treasure? That's even closer. I do, I do think it starts with a T. Hmm. Once upon a... A time! That's it. <laughs> now, Spot is dedicated to all of the guppies who will grow up and protect our oceans. That's you! Ready, Kalis? Ready. My name is Spot, and my fur is thick and short. Racing my pals underwater is my favorite sport. Spot is a Guadalupe fur seal. Guadalupe fur seals spend most of their lives out at sea. Their furry, thick coat keeps them very warm in the winter. So here's Spot 
and he's a baby seal. We call them seal pups. Do you like to swim really fast? Spot's an excellent swimmer. He's a great athlete, even though he's just a pup. <laughs> I may be just a pup, but I am the fastest swimmer in my sea lion pod. I like to eat shrimp, crab, and especially fish like cod. Oh, cod is delicious. Have you ever had cod before? <laughs> oh, speaking of pods or schools, different animals in the sea have different names for their family groups. So sea lions are called pods and fish are sometimes called schools. So most fish, fish swim together in groups called schools to avoid being captured by predators. So mermaids, just like sea lions are called pods, like whales and dolphins too. It was a lovely day under the warm sun. I was with my good friends and we were having some fun. We splashed around feeling free, looking for adventures in the big blue sea. No matter where you go in the sea, you can find an adventure somewhere. Hayless always gets herself into the craziest adventures <laughs> under the sea. Did you know that most of our planet is covered by water? The oceans are so big, it's really hard for human scientists to discover everything. That's why it's so hard for scientists to find mermaids. Most of the time we find you and <laughs> Kalis likes to find humans on purpose. She likes to swim up to tourists by her kingdom and steal their goggles while they're snorkeling. <laughs> oh, is that what they're called? What do you call them? Oh, well, what do you call those things that go like this? They don't really help you see it all. Instead, they just kind of fog up. <laughs> but everyone seems to wear them. Those are goggles? I think you called them Googles once. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> we dove deep into the water using our front flippers to pick up speed. It was a race to the finish as I continued to lead. Sea lions are very strong swimmers. They use their very, very powerful flippers to cut through the water like a torpedo. Animal life can be found at all depths of the ocean from just above the surface to the deepest, darkest trenches of the ocean that are seven miles below the surface. The deepest trench in the ocean is called the Marianas Trench, and scientists haven't explored it yet. Even a lot of merfolk like us haven't explored, but we have heard stories of deep undersea merfolk who live there in the dark. Maybe we can meet them one day and become friends. And maybe you'll be the humans to discover what's living there. Oh, like giant squid. Ooh. My sea lion friends swam belly up as I read, reached, raced them. As I raced them going down, we passed all the jellyfish and dashed through Octopus Town. Make sure you're careful. It is jellyfish season after all. <laughs> oh, I hope someone told Spot. So we were talking about octopi before. One of my best animal friends is an octopus named Rigel. He's named after the constellation and he's a little baby octopus. Octopi have eight arms and three hearts. That's also a good reason why they're such good friends. Octopi have great memories and they are very, very smart. They like to do puzzles and escape from any kind of situation. They're a little bit like magicians, I think. <laughs> I use my whiskers to navigate the ocean's current and found myself ahead of the path. Next thing I know, I was under attack. Oh no, do you see what's going to attack Spot? What do you think that is? Well, let's find out. That looks pretty scary. Oh, and this looks pretty scary too. The hammerhead shark's unusually shaped head with the eyes positioned far to the sides gives this shark unique binocular vision to hunt for food. Now, not all sharks are scary. Most of the time, sharks just wanna be left alone. So do you think a shark is going to tr trouble after Spot? Do you think so? Well, I think that sharks are actually very nice. After all, they're always smiling. So that means they can't really be that mad at you. Oh, that's right. But they really have big grins. Not to mention shark eyesight is really, really bad. So sometimes I think they just might need a pair of Googles that way they can help see. <laughs> Besides, when sharks come up, they really don't know what it is that you are. They might think that you're a seal or a turtle. But if a shark comes up to you and you tell them, stop, I am a mermaid, they will say, oh my goodness, I am very sorry. Please go on your way. So what do you think? Do you think a hammerhead shark is after Spot? Or something scarier than that? 
Oh, that's scarier. Definitely scarier. I was trapped in a net full of plastic and trash. It would wrapped around my neck tighter and tighter with every kick and thrash. This is what we call a ghost net. Ghost nets are what human fishermen use to catch lots and lots of fish without the fish seeing the net. Unfortunately, lots of other creatures get caught in ghost nets too, and that can really hurt them. Trash that's left behind in the ocean can be very dangerous to ocean life. Many animals face extinction because of pollution. Creatures like sharks, sea turtles, seals, and sea lions, and even dolphins have been caught in those kinds of nets. Manta rays too. Ghost nets are very big and very sharp. And the more an animal struggles to get out of the net, the tighter it wraps around them. So poor Spot, he's in a really, really tight, well, spot. How do you think he's going to get out of this? Oh, poor Spot. I fought my way back to the top, barking for help. Almost out of breath, I started to yell. Scared and alone, I began to lose hope. But then a miracle, a boy throws me a rope. High up above sat a special red boat. It came to my rescue and I was pulled onto a float. So there's Spot and he's struggling to get out of the net. He's just a little seal pup. But of course there's always someone to come help. Do you know who that might be? This little boy on a special red boat? Well, let's find out. Untangling the net and checking my pulse were key. Along with the boy, animal doctors were taking care of me. We sailed to a marine center 20 miles from home. That's a long way away. It was important that my wounds healed before I could roam. Did you know Long Island has a marine rescue center? The Long Island Marine Rescue Center is based out in Riverhead, New York. They rescue sea turtles, seals, sea lions, and other aquatic mammals and creatures that get stuck in ghost nets or get cold stunned, especially sea turtles that are cold stunned in November to December. So I think Spot's in very good hands, especially since he found someone from the Marine Rescue Foundation. The boy, Charlie, would visit me every day. He kept me company when I was away. He said he was sorry that some humans polluted the big blue sea. He knew all life on earth was important, even for you and me. Lucky Spot, he had such a good fin friend in Charlie. Charlie did the right thing in getting help for the baby seal. Remember before I talked about sea turtles and how often they get stuck in ghost nets or can get cold stunned in the ocean? Here's a fun fact about sea turtles, especially since Long Island has several different species of sea turtles that come to visit. Sea turtles are hatched from a tiny egg on land, but they're usually spending their entire lives out at sea. Most sea turtle species are considered endangered. Do you know what kind of species of sea turtle that is? That's a green sea turtle. They're the most common species of sea turtle. With the help of my new friends, I am now healthy and strong. I can travel distances that are far and long. Looks like Spot was able to swim those 20 miles back to his home and back to his family safely. Thank goodness, what a relief. <laughs> sea lions, seals, and walruses are part of the same marine mammal family. They're called pinnipeds. The sea lions play together and they sound like barking dogs when they talk to one another. <laughs> Did you know that there's a big difference between seals and sea lions? You can tell visually because seals have invisible round ear holes that are internal. Sea lions have external ear flaps. So if you're trying to tell the difference between Daisy the seal at the Long Island Aquarium and Java the sea lion, just look for their ears. That's a good tip. So how can you help marine mammals like Spot and his friends? Sometimes help comes from unexpected faces, but that's what makes the world connect in all sorts of places. We have friends and volunteers like the little boy, Charlie. We have surfers and lifeguards who are on the beaches and can watch out for swimmers and animals alike. We have veterinarians who are animal doctors and we have marine biologists. They're scientists who study marine life. They track the patterns of different animal movements and they help care for animals in need too. Have you ever seen the biggest fish in the sea? 
The whale shark is the largest fish in the entire planet. They can grow up to 46 feet in length. And for those of you who don't have feet as a form of measurement, that's longer than a school bus. Wow, this is a juvenile whale shark. So that one's pretty little, all things considered. Now, are you as long as a whale shark? Or will you grow as long as a whale shark? I don't think so. Guppies are very tiny humans. <laughs> So here's another way that you can help. Be responsible and pick up trash that's left behind on the beaches. So Earth will be safer for all of its kind. Oh, Kayla, this one's about seahorses. <laughs> seahorses are named for the shape of their head, which looks like the head of a horse. A baby seahorse is about the size of a jelly bean. Now we don't have jelly beans under the sea, but we do have something similar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are kelp beans. And kelp beans are very, very, very tiny. But instead of being sweet, they're salty. We <laughs> like to eat them after lunch. Before I swam into the ocean, about to say goodbye, Charlie and I promised to share this survival guide. Be brave and protect our big blue sea because Spot needs friends like you and me. <laughs> Kayla's what can some of the guppies do to protect the ocean at home? Sure, kids can do a lot of things to protect the ocean, like picking up trash and making sure plastic bottles and bags never get into the ocean. You can make a big difference, especially for Spot and his sea friends and mermaids just like Mist and I. So when it's time for you to go out on your socially distanced walk along the beach, why don't you bring it back along with you and pick up some of the trash that's left behind. You're doing the entire planet a favor. <laughs> the end. Oh, that was a wonderful story. Thank you for sharing that with us, Kaylis. Well, thank you for sharing that with me, Miss. After all, being able to take care of our ocean is the most important thing that humans can do. But if you see an animal in need, you do have to be very careful. Make sure that you stay far enough away from them and you call for help. That's right. If you're a regular guppy and not an animal doctor or marine biologist, there's a hotline that you can call to help stranded marine mammals on Long Island. Make sure that you call the New York Marine Rescue Foundation. They can help no matter where you are on Long Island. They've rescued whales, sea turtles, seals, and sea lions. And it's also mandated by New York state law that you have to stay 50 feet away from any seal or sea lion, whether it's in distress or not. So even though they look like cuddly friends, they have the protection that New York state gives us. So make sure that you always give them the space they need to play. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes sea creatures don't know if you're going to play with them or if you're trying to scare them. So they might get a little spooked and jump or since fish have different germs than humans do and mermaids, you certainly wouldn't want to get them sick or get yourself sick. <laughs> Just believe us, having sea lion seizes is not fun. No, it's not. <laughs> it gets everywhere. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story about saving a baby sea lion. Now I have a story for you that's about how sometimes even the smallest good deed has the biggest impact. And sometimes the biggest surprises come in the smallest packages. This story is called Pearl by Molly Idol. Now, how many of our guppies are really, really little? Raise those fins nice and high if you're a little guppy. Sometimes when you look at all of the grown-up humans, you might think, what can I do to be different or special? But this story teaches you that no matter what, you have the power to do something wonderful. So this is Pearl by Molly Idol. Oh, I love this story. In the vast sea of blue, some mermaids watched over the waves breaking upon the endless beaches. Some kept an eye on the coral reefs. Merfolk across the sea have different jobs that they have to protect the seas. So some watch over the coral reefs. Some tended to the towering forests of kelp rising from the ocean floor. The kelp forests are home to so many different creatures and lots of merfolk are their guards. They watch over the kelp themselves and all of the animals that live there. Some guarded the giants of the deep and Pearl deeply yearned to be one of them. This is one of the giants of the deep. And that little, little mermaid over there is our friend Pearl. She's very little, but she wants to do her best to grow up to be a guardian. Mother, I'm big enough to help too, she said. Yes, Pearl, her mother considered. 
come with me. I have something very, very important for you to look after. Oh, is she going to take care of one of the Krakens? Oh, I wonder. She's so tiny, but her mother is giving her a chance. What do you think? Oh, maybe because she's so little, maybe she's going to watch all of the baby seahorses. Pearl and her mother swam up and up and up, almost to the surface. Oh, and a sea lion pup is following them too. I wonder if it's Spot. They swam up past the breaking waves until the sandy shore stretched all around them. This, said her mother, is yours. What do you think her mother's giving her, the entire beach? That's a lot to look after for one little mermaid. Well, let's see. Pearl's mother placed a single grain of sand in Pearl's hand. Yours to take care of for, uh, for every day and keep safe every night. But mother, protested Pearl, who was a little disappointed, you said I could help with something important. The smallest of things can make a great difference, Pearl, her mother replied. So Pearl was expecting something big, but instead she has the tiniest grain of, grain of sand on the whole beach. I can see why she might be disappointed, but her mother says something very wise. Sometimes the smallest of things can make a big difference. I think that's something we should remember throughout the story. With that, Pearl was left alone. Her mother dove back into the waves to go back to her job guarding the beasts of the deep. A wave of disappointment washed over Pearl. There she is watching her mother swim back. She was surrounded by thousands of grains of sand, millions, billions, beyond counting. And here she was entrusted with just one? What can one tiny grain of sand among billions do? I wonder. Pearl's heart grew heavy and the weight of it pulled her down, down, down. She's so sad. Have you ever been so sad that you felt that you were being pulled down, down, down into the waves? Don't worry, someone is always here to help lift you back up again. And when she hit the ocean floor, the salts of her tears mingled with the sea. Pearl definitely needs a helping hand right now. I bet she can use an octopus arm or two and a big octopus hug with all those hearts. Pearl glowered at the grain of sand. Can we make a glowering face? Hmm. That means she's frowning really, really hard. Can we furrow our brows? Let's glower at that grain of sand. Hmm. <laughs> I can't stay mad at you too long. <laughs> she clenched the grain of sand in her tiny fist. Then from beneath her fingers came a faint light. But when Pearl opened her hand, it was gone. Pearl closed her hand around the tiny grain again, gently this time. So she started off angry, but as soon as she closed her hand around it, it began to glow like a, like, like a tiny light under the sea, bioluminescent scales of a fish. Let's see what happens when she holds it more gently this time. The sand resting on her palm had a luster to it or a shine to it that had been there before. Is she holding? Oh, that looks familiar. Kind of like her name. <laughs> what do you think she's holding, Guppies? A pearl. That's right. Every day, Pearl preserved it, even from the beasts of the deep. She polished it and played with it. So there she is playing with a seahorse, and she's taking very, very good care of it. It might be a tiny grain of sand, but it's her tiny grain of sand. So she has to take especially good care of it. I'm sure you take care of little things that mean a lot to you. Every night, Pearl protected it. And very, very slowly, it began to grow and grow and glow. So it's growing bigger and bigger thanks to Pearl's protection. And it starts to glow too. What do you think that could mean? Well, it must be some very strong mermaid magic. And as it grew lighter, so did Pearl's heart. It seemed to buoy them up and up and up 
Look how big that tiny little pearl is getting. It's getting bigger and brighter by the second and it's floating them all the way up to the surface until it rose into the vast sea of stars. What did, her pearl, what, is? what did her pearl become, everybody? Pearl beamed up at it. It beamed back at her and its beautiful light touched everything. What did Pearl's pearl become? Did it become the moon? <laughs> no wonder it's so big and bright every night. It's all the love that she put into that pearl. It sparkled on the breaking waves and all of the coral, creating beautiful new reefs. So Pearl's love is shining its light on everything in the ocean. It glowed in the tides flowing through the towering forests of kelp and illuminated the giants rising from the deep. So there is the light touching the kelp forests and it's even reaching the big kraken deep, deep, deep in the dark sea. That is some powerful light magic. And that light shone upon Pearl. The end. Oh, Mist, I love that story. It just goes to show that no matter how tiny you are, you can make the biggest of differences. And with a little love and lots and lots and lots of care, you can make something that's very small and something that doesn't seem very special at all into something that can be shared by everybody. <laughs> oh, Kayla, do you think we have time for one more story? Oh, I think so. Let's see. We have so many stories from the sea we'd love to share. But since we're mermaids and you might not know how to befriend a mermaid in the first place, this book might give you a little bit of a helping hand. So, do you know how to catch a mermaid? Well, maybe we can help you with that. How do you catch a mermaid? You have to use your imagination, get creative, smart, and clever, or make the right creation. <laughs> so this is How to Catch a Mermaid from Adam Wallace. Now, we start off on a beach, or rather, humans start off on a beach. Last week, I saw a mermaid. It's not something I'd pretend. I'd really like to catch her so she can be my friend. We have the best adventures. I would learn her mermaid waves. We tour her mermaid city and swim for days and days. So here we are and here's our human adventurer friend and our mermaid friend. Now, have you seen this mermaid before? We have seen her, <laughs> but we can't tell you who she is yet. We'll just have to find out. Hey, you two, come follow me. I need you on my team. The water's where we need to plan our mermaid catching scheme. So our diver friend enlists another friend of hers and a land sea lion. You call them pups too, right? They're called pups on land. That's right. <laughs> so in order to catch a mermaid, you're going to need a couple of friends. After all, mermaids are very fast and you should never ever swim alone. But how to catch a mermaid? You don't learn this at school, not even at mermaid school. We'll need to build a gentle trap and start near a tide pool. Tide pools are where when the tide goes in and out, sometimes the tide leaves behind water that gets trapped in different rocks. Lots of creatures like crabs and tiny fish like minnows like to swim in there. You can even find sea stars. First, I have this jewelry box. She'll love this bait I bought her. She can't resist a treasure chest. Oh no, it's in the water. So not only do mermaids really like treasure, but so do other creatures like the crabs. Remember I mentioned the crabs in the tide pool before? <laughs> Looks like they're taking the bait right to our mermaid friend. <laughs> mermaids love shiny things. Well, mermaids love bright shiny things. A crown will catch your eye. We'll lure her with this new trap and then our net will fly. Oh, they even build a net that big and that quickly too. That crown sure is beautiful though. I bet our mermaid friend is going to want to add that to her collection of thingamabobs. What do you think? I think so too. Her seaweed lasso snatched the crown. We'll need a different plan. Let's put a sparkly necklace down inside a giant clam. Ooh. Have you ever used a seaweed lasso before? 
those are very, very difficult to use. In my kingdom, we use them all the time to hunt and catch food, but this mermaid is using it to catch some crowns instead. And for her to be able to use that on land, sometimes seaweed gets a little soggy when it is out of the water. So she must be a really, really powerful mermaid. So let's see if this sparkly necklace of theirs works. The mermaid switched the necklace with a rock to stop the clam from snapping. She's very clever. Now she has another prize. We need some better trapping. This mermaid is quick, clever, and is constantly outdoing her friends. I don't know, I think she's rather smart. But I do want the, the mermaid and the humans to be friends too. What do you think they'll do next? Well, let's find out. We made a lasso of our own and hid in the seaweed. She swam too fast for us to catch. Oh, when will we succeed? See, it's really hard for humans to use a seaweed lasso. It looks like they made it correctly. They just might not be used to throwing them yet. They can be a little tricky to use underwater too. After all, water acts differently than air does. So it's very hard to get the lasso to land exactly where you want it even when you're a mermaid, but for a human who doesn't live under the sea, very good luck trying. So they switched their plan. Let's try to switch it up and play some funky beats. Maybe that will draw her in. Oh no, there's sharks, retreat. Now, do you think the sharks are going to give them a problem or do you think sharks are just going to want to listen to their music? They like to have fun too. We escaped from all the sharks. That was a scary scene. But now we get to up our game with this cool submarine. So the sharks are still dancing to the music, but the guppies got away. Where on earth do you think these guppies got a submarine from? Maybe they found it and it was hidden in a coral reef or a sunken treasure. The submarine had robot arms to catch our fishy glass, but this mermaid can't be caught. She really is too fast. <laughs> See, human stuff is really amazing, mermazing if you will, but sometimes you just can't beat some good fashion mermaid magic. It's time to pull out all the stops. We have to be quite sneaky. Can we all quiet our fins? Shh. But she heard our trap from far away. That treasure chest was creaky. Ooh, wood when it's underwater in shipwrecks does get very creaky after a while. Oh no, looks like the sharks are back. We're doomed, what can we do? We've used up all our traps and bait. Without some help, we're through. Uh-oh, oh, those guppies are in a really tight spot now. What do you think will happen next? They don't have any music to distract the sharks. But our mermaid comes to save the day. She made a trap to save us. She scares the sharks and scoops us up. She really is courageous. There she is using her trumpet and she used a sea lasso of her own to help save the guppies. Hooray, we're safe and back on land. Three cheers to our mermaid. We'll miss her smart and clever tricks. We wish she could have stayed. Merfolk are actually very shy. A lot of the time when they meet humans, they tend to just clam up. <laughs> But not our mermaid friend. The end. And it looks like our sea pup, our land pup, is shaking off all the water. <laughs> Maybe these guppies can meet their human friends sometime. I bet they have a lot of questions to ask. Oh. Speaking of, we have a couple questions that we got letters in a bottle about. Before we have to swim on back, we thought we'd answer them for you. So the first question we got is, what inspired us to become mermaids? Well, in case you didn't know, we are mermaids. We were born <laughs> mermaids, so we have our tails with us. If you had a color tail, what color would yours be? <laughs> we both have scale shifting magic, so anytime we want, we can change our scale color. But the best thing about being a mermaid that we hope inspires you is making people smile. And we like to make people smile as wide and toothy as the biggest sharks under the sea. Making you happy is our inspiration. That's the best thing about being mermaids. <laughs> We're also inspired to take care of our oceans and hopefully you'll be inspired after today too. 
This is our home and it's home for you as well. Even if you don't live under the sea, the sea is still part of where you live and it connects all of us. So it's important that we make sure that it stays safe for everybody. <laughs> and what was the other letter in a bottle question, Kayla? Do you remember? How do you become a mermaid? Oh, that's right. Well, if you wanted to switch your form, sometimes you can talk to a sea witch about bargaining, but you have to be very careful. Though not all sea witches are very scary. You just have to find the one that's right for you. If I wanted to become a human, which I don't do very often, it takes a lot of magic to do so. I use my magical amulet to help. This is a necklace I carry with me where all of my magic is concentrated. <laughs> but if you are a puppy and you want to pretend to be a mermaid, make sure you have the swim readiness skills necessary before you don your mermaid scales. Check out Fin Fun Mermaid. They're amazing for beginner swimmers. And before you even become a mermaid, like Miss said, make sure that you are swim ready and swim safe. After all, if you're going to have a tail, that's completely different swimming than swimming with human legs. So, so you want to make sure that you can swim as a human before you even start to swim as a mermaid. So you want to be able to swim freestyle or the front crawl. You want to be able to float on your back and on your tummy. You'll want to be able to swim the dolphin kick for 25 meters unassisted. And you should probably always, always swim with someone with you. Never swim by yourself. If you have these swim readiness skills, even you can become a mermaid or a merman. <laughs> or you can always find a mermaid wishing stone. Miss, you know what a mermaid wishing stone is, don't you? I do. If you find a mermaid wishing stone or a mermaid gives it to you, this is a very powerful piece of magic. What you do is hold that stone close to your heart, close your eyes and think of the sea as you make your wish. And your wish will come true one day, <laughs> especially when you need it most. So if you find yourself swimming in the sea and you end up on an island and there's no other land to be found, you use that mermaid wishing stone. And hopefully if you wish for a tail, that will come in the moment you need it the most. You know what I'd be wishing on my mermaid wishing stone for? What? That next time we get to share all of these amazing stories of the sea in person with everybody. If we could all give you the biggest starfish hugs right now, we would. So let's all make a big wish. Let's close our eyes and think of the sea and make our wish. Maybe next year we'll all be able to swim together in harmony. I think we should give each other a big sea star hug. Big starfish hug, everybody. Hug your pod. <laughs> Oh, looks like it's time for us to head back to the kelp forest. Thank you so much for inviting us to swim and share all these stories with you. I had a fantastic time. What about you, Kalis? I had an amazing time getting to celebrate with everyone today and share some of our favorite stories with you. Maybe you can send us a letter in a bottle and you can tell us what your favorite land stories are. And then we can share that with Miss Marina's class at her mermaid school. That sounds like a blast. Thanks again, Tropicon, for having us and have a fantastic day, everybody. Bye-bye.